Today on Panther TV, a South student is on his way to recovery after a serious accident. A local foundation invites a South team to take the court at the Garden, find out the cause behind the game. And on the court and on the ice, two sets of brothers are making it a season to remember. Panther TV starts now. Good morning, Plymouth South. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ava Davy Bassett. And I'm Jill Neal. Recently, the Plymouth South community was shaken by an after school car accident that left a student fearing for his life. But just a few months later, that student is on the road to recovery. Here's Jesse Hayes with the story. It was the afternoon of November 16th when Aiden Enochian was heading to go fishing with a friend. He was the passenger in his friend's car when a driver T boned them when they turned onto the highway. The damage can be seen just behind the passenger side door where Aiden and Okian was sitting on that warm November afternoon. I was leaving school like this was at 2.30 when the crash happened and I was going to go fishing with like some of my friends and uh, I was riding with my friend and we were just laughing and then out of nowhere I just like blacked out and I woke up like I touched my face and I started blood everywhere and uh, what is it? Everyone was saying you're going to be fine and uh, I was like saying how's my face and they said you look fine. When I saw the police, I was like, what's going on? I was like, you have a broken nose. I only thought it was, you know, that until later on when we got into, like, scanning my head. Aiden was taken by ambulance to BID, where he was med flighted to Children's Hospital in Boston. There, he found out just how severe his injuries were. I really only thought I had a broken nose and all that, but, like, apparently uh, there was, like, a head CT scan and I had, like, brain bleeding. Like, you know, that kind of got me worried, but I felt like I was just going to survive, so I was pretty chill about it. It was pretty serious like if we didn't know like my sister kind of like saved my life like she does like scans and all that and she wanted to check if I had brain bleeding and they never checked it and if I didn't know I could have died she kind of just told everyone and then like this is all because the car t-boned right behind me and my head whiplash back and forth causing uh you know my face to basically crave into my skull. Aiden underwent facial reconstruction surgery and spent eight days in the ICU. Like, I'm thankful for my surgeons a ton because, like, they, the plastic surgeon said this was, like, the hardest surgery in his life after, like, 30 years because my face was just shattered, so. Through it all, he remained positive. I think I kind of took it pretty uh, good. Like, I just thought it's going to be fine, and I was trying to, like, just cheer up my family because, you know, they're crying. Like, you know, I just, like, making jokes, and that was just the whole entire time I was in the hospital. Like, I was just talking to the nurses. Like, I just didn't want to think I was going to, you know, die. Less than three months later, Aiden is back in school, back on track, and back to his hobby of powerlifting. Uh, yeah, I want to start powerlifting again because, you know, I just like working out, so, and just, I don't know, powerlifting just makes me not stressed out. I think it's going good, like, there is, like, some, tr like, things that I have to go to the hospital, like, in Wealtham several times, like, every month, or sometimes just once every month, but uh, I'm getting cleared by the surgeons now, so I think I'll be cleared in around, like, two months. While he is grateful for his speedy recovery, the horror of this moment still haunts him. Every night, there's, like, these random flashbacks I get, like, it feels like a gunshot to me sometimes, like, waking up, and it's just, I don't know, sleeping's just terrible, but... I just try to get uh, with everyday life, like mostly being a normal person. We're all very happy for the positive outcome for Aiden and wish him the best as he focuses on getting cleared, graduating, and heading off to college next year, which he says is fully paid for thanks to the settlement from the accident. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Jesse Hayes. Have you been wondering why we haven't gotten much snow the last few years? Cassius Johnson went to our local weather expert to find out. We've seen a little snow this winter, but most of the time, it's been foggy and rainy. Overall, it seems like it's going to be a fairly mild and warm winter. Mr. Woodard says the lack of snow is due to one thing. We've all heard about global warming and climate change, and it's sort of a big, broad topic. But if you look specifically at New England, where we live, um, average temperatures have gone up a half a degree per decade. Um, and in wintertime, average temperatures have gone up 1.3 degrees per decade. So just since I was a kid 40 years ago, it's five or six degrees warmer in the winter. So with that kind of increased temperatures, 
And the ocean is also much warmer than the atmosphere too. Mm -hmm. So if we have the air blow off the ocean, what would be a snowstorm turns into a rainstorm. So I think a lot of our snowstorms are now, we're getting rainy and windy storms instead of snowstorms. Now that change is the difference between rain and snow. So with that kind of increased temperatures, and the ocean is also much warmer than the atmosphere too. Mm -hmm. So if we have the air blow off the ocean, what would be a snowstorm turns into a rainstorm. So I think a lot of our snowstorms are now, we're getting rainy and windy storms instead of snowstorms. When I was a kid, I don't remember ever there being a, a no school day for a windstorm. And we've had several of those over the past year and delays. Um, it's just something about the way the jet stream kind of steers the storms right at us. And even if they're not necessarily snowstorms, they're very powerful storms and very high winds knock down the trees and all that stuff, take down power lines. Um, but it's all just related to the amount of increased warmth and the increased moisture in the atmosphere from global warming. Um, and it all combines to make our weather slowly change over time. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I need that snow to drop. This week, we finally had our first snow day in almost two years. Seniors like me are still hoping for more. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Cassius Johnson. Credible news sources are becoming more rare these days, but a recently created news website is trying to change that in and around the town of Plymouth. Here's Gavin Carra with the story. With many young adults getting their entertainment and source of news from social media, one local news team is looking forward to sharing their messages and stories throughout the internet. While growing up with a love of news, Mark Pothier became a skilled writer and reporter over the years. With more than 28 years of experience under his belt, he's even a Pulitzer Prize recipient for his work with the Boston Globe. Growing up, I was the kid in the neighborhood who had the newsletter that I put in everyone's mailbox. I was always interested in journalism. I was always interested in writing. And I landed in Plymouth in the 80s as a reporter and then an editor for the local newspapers here. Uh, there were a group of them. The Old Colony Memorial was the biggest one, and I became the editor of that for 14 years. And I went on to the Boston Globe for 22 years. And now I'm back in Plymouth, and it's kind of a full circle thing for me. I felt that it was important to come back and try to help establish a new site in Plymouth because the Old Colony Memorial is essentially no more, which is sad to me. With it seeming that we grow apart more and more with each generation, Pothier and his team are looking to create a sense of community and provide information with the new Plymouth Independent News Platform. Community, we want to do accountability reporting. That means writing about government issues, kind of lifting the lid off things that haven't ex been exposed in a, in a long time. The old saying in journalism is sunlight is the best disinfectant. That tends to still be true. So we want to do that kind of reporting. We've done quite a bit of it already. But we also want it to be a place where people feel they can get some of their information up or they can have their viewpoints get aired. While working alongside Mark on the Plymouth Independent, Bill Harding is a vital part of the process. Having over 35 years of experience, it seemed natural for him to help with this project. It changed, it evolved, and uh, it wasn't what it had been. And when this opportunity came along, and when a group of people started to think of getting a news something happening in Plymouth, it was a natural. With running a nonprofit, financing such a large project as the Plymouth Independent is a struggle. So any and all donations are appreciated by Mark and his team. It's super challenging, honestly. We're starting from scratch, essentially, except we have a really great board of directors and some generous donors that have helped to get us started. But it's free to people, so we're totally reliant on donations and we're applying for grants and that kind of thing. But it's going to be a struggle continually from a financial standpoint. With the trials of running an independent news team this day and age, the Plymouth Independent is doing whatever it can to gain attention while spreading current and interesting topics about our town. I'm Gavin Carrar reporting for Panther TV. A local veteran is giving back by helping others transition back to normal life after deployment. Here's Lacey Monahan with the story. Plymouth resident Megan Keller served in Iraq nearly two decades ago, and she knows firsthand the challenges of coming back from war. Heroes in Transition is a local organization dedicated to the wellness of veterans returning from deployment. 
They provide services for active duty members, veterans, and families, um, providing uh, different types of programs like um, family gatherings and equestrian programs, and they also do, um, they have a new program called Reboot and Regroup, which helps um, veterans focus on mindfulness. Plymouth resident Megan Keller and her husband met in the military and were deployed to Iraq together following the 9-11 attacks. They both came home, but the transition proved to be difficult. I am a veteran. Um, I served in Iraq in 2003. So working with veterans organizations is extremely important to me. Um, one of those reasons also too, my husband, who I met in the military, um, unfortunately, I think many people may know um, the statistic is over 22 veterans a day commit suicide. And unfortunately, my late husband is um, part of that statistic. So I, part of my healing journey and healing process from that is to kind of be part of something bigger than me and to help give back and to share Kurt's story. Um, so if anybody else is out there struggling, they may seek help or uh, also help reduce the stigma of receiving help. One of the main reasons for veteran suicide is post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, something Keller wishes there were more resources for when her and her husband returned. There really wasn't uh, organizations like Heroes in Transition for people to, um, you know, connect with other, mem you know, other veterans and families and, and uh, there really wasn't a lot of support out there. Fortunately, more supports are available now, one of those being Heroes in Transition. Uh, I or originally got involved with the organization because um, I'm a physical therapist assistant over at Cape Cod Rehab, and they do a um, cool adventure relay called uh, Ruck for Hit. So I got involved by volunteering and working the course, um, helping the participants um, um, kind of stay on the course and um, make sure they're injury free and we'd massage them and stretch them and making sure they're feeling okay. So that's how I first started with the organization. Um, but then it kind of developed into a different role, a training role. So not only do we, my company I work for, help the participants out on the course, we designed a cross-training program. Ruck for Hit is an annual fundraiser where participants run a 200-mile relay race with a military ruck on their backs. The ruck symbolizes carrying the burden for those who can't. This year will be the first time Megan not only trains others, but joins a team herself. So you end up running around 22 to 30 miles. And this is over a 36-hour period where you're stuffed in a van <laughs> with your team members. This program has had a huge place in Megan's life. Everybody kind of has a different reason as to why they're there and why they're supporting the organization and why they're out there putting themselves um, through this grueling event. For more information on these programs, visit the Hero in Transitions website. I'm Lacey Monahan reporting for Panther TV. Now let's head over to Zach with sports. On January 14th, the Unified Basketball team had the chance to play at the TD Garden. Here's Kira McLaughlin with more. I'm here at TD Garden where the Unified Basketball team is preparing for a game they'll never forget. With a departure from Plymouth South High School at 6 a.m., everyone was ready to play in the big game sponsored by the Andrew James Lawson Foundation. As much fun as it is for them, it's a whole lot of fun for us too. We play the, I call it the Andrew Tribute video, um, and it's played during warm-ups before every game all day long. Most people will see that, may or may not remember it, all they can think about is being at the garden, why they're there or how they came to be there, they may not know. But I like to introduce them to Andrew so that they know why we're doing what we do. Andrew's parents, Regina and Jim, hope to see their late son included in all activities. Being a, a person with Down syndrome, um, to go through school with the same group of kids and make these friendships, these lifelong friendships, and play sports with them. I always say he had such a large group of friends, and he truly did. So relationships matter. It's important to develop them and keep them. To keep their son's legacy alive, they started the Andrew James Lawson Foundation Invitational at the Garden to promote inclusion. Plymouth North versus Plymouth South, how can you do any, anything better than that? Uh, so that, that was a real treat uh, this year. These two schools exemplify, basically, that uh, how inclusion works and how it can work to the benefit of everybody. Inclusion in sports brings people together, and our unified trip to the garden definitely brought our family, friends, and community together. My family members came, my teachers came, 
my principals and it was so fun and a lot of cheerleaders cheering on for me too and it was so good having a positive attitude playing with my friends that's where the celtics and the globe truck others play at so i guess i'm extremely lucky that i get to play as maybe one or the other after the game, the team got an inside look at the garden and got to be part of a post-game interview. My friend and a couple of others went on the interview, and I guess it was a bonus experience for me. I like the relationship that I built with a lot of these kids, and it means a lot to me, um, you know, through the whole season, just to participate with all these kids, and we all become real good friends. It's good to give people the opportunity to be a part of inclusion and see where it goes. And hopefully it will work for them and they will have the experience that Andrew had because it was such a great experience. What an amazing opportunity this has been. Great job to all the athletes. A special thank you to the Andrew James Lawson Foundation for making today possible. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Kira McLaughlin. The boys hockey team has just two games remaining in the regular season, and this year they're led by several four-year varsity players, including two who spent a lot of time together. Here's Matt Crowley with more. While teammates become close, for the boys hockey team, two teammates share a bond of a lifetime. At just a few seconds older, senior captain Sean McAmeyer jokes about being older, wiser, taller, and better than his twin, Carter, who is also a senior captain on the boys hockey team. I've played since our fifth birthday. We kind of our neighbors did it, so we just kind of decided to do it for fun and uh, just kind of stuck, I guess. I don't know. And I'm 18 now, so 13 years. Uh, yeah. Every, every team, every year, we've always been on the same team. Uh, yeah, always. Every team since I was five. While they're typical brothers and don't always get along, one place they can rely each other on is the ice. It's pretty cool to be a captain with them, even though we disagree on almost everything. Uh, it's pretty cool to tie things off with the person you've played your entire career with, so uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. With our high school careers coming to a close, one question seems to keep coming to the surface. Who's better? I'm just like the bigger person though, because like, <laughs> I know I'm better. <laughs> like, like for instance, like I have 18 points, he's 9, like... Me, obviously. Uh, every year except last year, I've had more goals than him. Good luck to the boys as they wrap up their season next week. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Matt Crowley. Another winter sport has a pair of brothers this year, but this is the first team they've been on together. Here's Ethan Mott with the story. It's not often our freshman makes varsity, but this year, one freshman joined his senior brother on the varsity basketball team. Dylan Volkinger is in his third year of playing varsity basketball at Plymouth South. Uh, I started playing basketball or varsity my so uh, sophomore year. Uh, this was a swing team there. wasn't really sure if I was going to make it there, but yeah, it was Coach Costa picked me sophomore year. This year, his brother Logan, a ninth grader, also made the varsity team. As the youngest, Logan looked up to his older brother and his friends. It's fun. I enjoy it. I'm glad I get to play with my brother and all his friends before they leave for college. Both players attribute their success on the court to those around them. Um, I would say throughout for basketball, there's been a lot of people. I mean, the kids above me that I played with, like uh, Ricky Shepard, Pete Lamborn, guys like that. Uh, the ones above me that I played with are guys that I looked up to. Uh, Coach Costa, Coach Giggs, and Captain Aiden and Justin. They're always pushing me to be the best player I can be. I mean, I give all the credit to my teammates. I'm a big team player. I mean, obviously, a lot of the guys around me, I try to get involved, and they try to get me involved. It's been, it's good, especially with uh, my brother on the team, getting him involved and stuff. While Dylan and Logan don't play the same positions, they still work together to improve their games. I mean, me and Logan have pretty different skill sets. Uh, we play different positions, but there's always things that we've worked on together, like dribbling, just basics like that. have always been things we've worked on together, and I feel like I've helped a lot with. And as Dylan closes out his senior season, he has some advice for his younger brother. Um, I would just say to always stay calm and mostly focus on the mental parts of it. I know that sometimes it can be overwhelming, but I, he's great at basketball. He does his thing like that, so I would just say stay mentally in it is probably the biggest thing I'd want him to, to learn. And with three more years to go, Logan has goals for the future. Uh, just to be the best player I can be, help my team as much as I can, and just win as much as possible. Best of luck to Dylan and Logan as they finish the season and go into the postseason. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Ethan Mott. That's all for sports. Good luck to all the teams as they wrap up the winter season and those heading into the postseason.
Thanks, Zach. Have you ever thought about a career as a teacher? You can find out if working with little kids is for you. Here's Angel Chemek with Tech Talk. Welcome back to Tech Talk. Today we're going to see how the Child Care Tech Program teaches young adults to nurture the young minds of children. Child Care is a technical studies program that you can't miss, as it is housed just inside the front doors of Plymouth South High School. This program shows a unique aspect of child care and an environment with an engaging atmosphere for young learners. We look for students that are energetic, that enjoy children, that are happy to be here, that want to participate and play with the children, that are excited to come here every day and have a new adventure because it's never the same. I was excited for the fact that we get to be teachers and we do more than just learning. Like we, Well, we learn like the development of them. We're also like experiencing it hands-on and we get to see the way that they think. I was, basically, I was really just excited. Going beyond textbooks and offering dynamic learning skills, the students in this tech navigate real-life challenges in a playful environment. It's always fun and it's always different and I thoroughly enjoy working with children. I've worked with children since I was a high school student at Plymouth South High School. So I always, I, I love coming to work every day. What, when else can you come to work and people are excited to see you and are happy to talk to you and be with you and are just overjoyed to be in your company every day. So we have a theme of the week and a letter of the week every week and we just like go off of those. We have a math activity for it, science activity, arts and crafts, and literacy. And we all just rotate through them. The high school students in this shop don't just learn about child care, but also explore the art of creating educational games. They're assigned uh, different aspects of our curriculum. They write a lesson plan for that, and then they implement the, the lesson. And that goes over the course of every day. We um, do that with the ju juniors and seniors and the sophomores. Some of them are difficult. Some of them are very well behaved. We have a lot of younger ones this year. We only have one or two that are going off to kindergarten. Embarking on a journey to nurture the next generation, Plymouth South's Child Care Program provides students with valuable skills, enhanced and experience in the art of early childhood education. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Angel Chumick. Love is in the air. Aiden Morrow is prowling the halls to ask students, who is their celebrity crush? This week I went around asking you guys, who is your celebrity crush? Let's see how you answered. Obviously Brian Cranston. Jacob Bellorti. <laughs> Megan Thee Stallion, uh, Lizzo, Ice Spice. Um, Nicki Minaj, Jacob Elordi, handsome Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> Our celebrity crush is Michael B. Jordan. Lauren Cohen from The Walking Dead. Zac Efron. <laughs> Bruno Mars. Uh, my celebrity crush would be uh, Megan Fox. Julian Edelman. Gosh. Ryan Reynolds. Chris Hemsworth. LeBron James. <laughs> now that you've all told me, I guess it's my turn. My crush is Cassius Johnson's cousin. For Panther TV, I'm Aiden Morrow. That's our time for today. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, Plymouth South. <laughs> I'm done. I, go. I gotta go. What was that? My water. It's okay. She just dribbled. Dribbled? Did we eat?